G'day, it's Damned from Fantasy Grounds Forums and today we're going to do a tutorial on Nine Slices. Nine Slices is a graphic definition where you slice up a base image into nine slices and you can use that to create an image of any size. This is primarily used for things like buttons and backgrounds in video games. I've started with this red base image, it's 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall and I've sliced it up, you can see there's uh, nine boxes of slightly different colors. You can see in I've tagged the coordinates of that start each of these squares. So the first one going across the top, we start at 0, 0, then we go to 100, 0, we go to 650, 0. So the first of those pairs is the horizontal coordinate and the second number is the vertical coordinate. Going into the middle row, we have 0, 150, we have 100, 150, we have 650, 150. When on the bottom row, we have 0, 525, 100, 525, and 650, 525. So each of those pairs marks the starting coordinates of that particular box. You might also notice that there are some additional coordinates in black. These black coordinates show where that particular um, intersection ends. We don't use the black coordinates because we only ever define the start and then we define the length or the height. So the black coordinates act are unnecessary for our calculations. I'm just putting them there to show you uh, where the, the actual size of each of these uh, slices. In this next scene, you'll see I've tagged each of these slices as either no tiling or tiles in a particular direction. So you'll see that the four corners do not tile. They're a fixed size. The dimensions that we provide for the four corners are what they are. Then we have the top and the bottom slices, they tile horizontally. They don't stretch, they tile. So when it gets to the end of that graphic, if it needs to be wider, it repeats that graphic again. Then we see the tiles on the left and the right, they tile vertically. Again, they don't stretch, they tile vertically. And then the middle slice, it can tile horizontally and vertically. So it will fill whatever space is left over. Don't worry about the fact that these are appear all over the page. That's because there's so much more information trying to fit onto this particular graphic. If we look at the width of these vertical slices, we can see that the first column is 100 pixels wide and the last column is 150 pixels wide. That leaves 800 minus 250 or 550 pixels wide for the center column. If we have something that spans left and middle, it'll be 650 pixels wide. If we have something that spans middle and right, it'll be 700 pixels wide. And if we have something that spans left, middle and right, it will be 800 pixels wide. Now we look at the height of the horizontal slices and we can see that the top slice is 100 pixels tall and we can see that the bottom slice is 75 pixels tall and that the entire image is 600 pixels tall, which leaves 425 pixels of height for the center slice. So if we've got a, something that spans the top and middle, it will be 525 pixels tall. If we have something that spans middle and bottom, it will be 500 pixels tall. If we have something that spans top, middle and bottom, it will be 600 pixels tall. In this graphic, we can see the names of each of the slices and we can see the sizes of those slices in this particular representation. So top left starts at 0, 0 and is 100 by 150 pixels. Top starts at 100 slash 0 and is 550 by 150 pixels. Top right starts at 650 across and 0 down and is 150 by 150 pixels. Into the middle row, we have left which starts at horizontal 0, vertical 150, and, and is 100 by 375 pixels. Middle starts at 100 across, 150 down, and is 550 by 375 pixels. Right starts at 650 across, 150 down, and is 150 by 375 pixels in size. Bottom left starts at 0 pixels across, 525 pixels down, and is 100 by 75 pixels in size. 
bottom starts at 100 pixels across, 525 pixels down, and is 550 by 75 pixels across, or in size. Bottom right starts at 650 pixels across and 525 pixels down, and is 150 by 75 pixels in size. This next image shows all of that information on the one page. And yes, it's a lot of information. So we've got the starting coordinates, we've got the widths, the heights, whether they tile or not, their names and their sizes. So this graphic is probably the, the key graphic to take out of this. And it's the, the most important one, but it's a very confusing graphic because there is so much information on it. A lot of people have trouble with nine slices. One of the things I find really useful to know about nine slices is that not all of the slices are compulsory. You can use various combinations of slices and you can sit down and work out which slices can or can't be used. But basically you need to define enough slices that they can tile to fill up the entire page. Now I'm going to show you five different examples of slices in the next shots. This image is a standard nine slices image. You can see that all nine slices have been defined. However, you might notice that not all the slices are in straight lines. The, they don't all match up uh, in, in perfect sizes on the top or left or right or bottom. However, all nine slices have been defined. You can see it here, the, the image, the image with the slices, here in Vanity Grounds, and then the code that shows all nine of the slices. In our next example, I've mocked up an image that just has a top, a middle, and a bottom slice. So the top does not tile vertically, it tiles horizontally. The bottom tiles horizontally, and the middle, in this case, will tile both horizontally and vertically. You can see it, this, the base image, the image with slices, you can see it here in Fantasy Grounds, and you can see the code that sets this one up. This is another simple tiled image where we've got a top left, a top, and a middle. So when it, when we see this finished image, it probably turns out that the top left was unnecessary in that in, in the positioning of, of the layout of this, but it just gives you an example of what you can do. So you're needing to make sure that the far end of a tiling image meets up neatly with its first end. So the right-hand edge of the, the start of the tile meets up with the left-hand edge of itself or of the next tiled image. Our next image, we've taken a piece of artwork from DeviantArt, and it's primarily uh, positioned on the right-hand side of this frame. So what I'm going to do is position that graphic on bottom right, and right, I'm going to position uh, white, the white part of this frame and in middle I'm going to put white the white section of this frame and what that will do is position this image neatly in the corner but it won't tile messily. This last example is the most simplest one I've got a, an image a base image that's primarily square and it is tileable in every direction so I'm simply going to use the middle definition and that way this will tile in all directions it will tile horizontally and vertically to fill whatever screen size that you are running. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial session. I hope you found it useful. You'll need to use the pause button so you can go over some of those code examples in more detail. But I think this should give you a better understanding of how the slices position themselves on the screen, how the base image slices really have no bearing on the final image you can your base image might be 500 by 500 pixels and your final desktop could be 2000 by 1000 pixels what the nine slices does is build your image around those those varying definitions but you need to understand which tile which slices tile which slices don't tile and in what directions things tile your corners are fixed, so if you place a corner object, it will always appear there. 
if you place a middle object, it goes there last after all the other pieces of the puzzle have been placed, put in place. So experiment a little bit, but keep it simple. Draw up your, get your base image. You need the right images. Uh, I see people trying to do nine slices with images that just don't tile in any direction. Uh, and you're going to have all sorts of grief when you try and do that because this system depends on tiling to accommodate multiple screen sizes. So you need to select the right image to start with. But once you've done that, there are lots and lots of different ways of slicing your image up to get the effect that you want. Have fun, and I hope to join you in a game sometime soon.